Project Pearl Harbor by Dan. Watch your country get you. Kennedy has been shot. One more fifth plan. We choose to be self-evident that all men are created. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. London, September 1940. Hello, America. This is Edward Murrow speaking from London. There were more German planes over the coast of Britain today than at any time since the war began. Adolf Hitler was determined to crush the last stronghold in Europe against Nazi Germany. His strategy bombed England, cities, and people. During the autumn of 1940, German bombers attacked London night after night for 76 consecutive nights. It came to be known as the Blitz. Twenty acres of London is on fire. It's quite a thought, isn't it? A lot of people were killed, a lot of civilians were killed. Because the Germans were determined to bring us to our knees, you see, at all costs. By the night of September the 14th, when my daughter was born, the docks were alight, London was ablaze. And in fact, the midwife opened the curtains because we got more bright light from London burning than we got from the electric light in the middle of the room. Throughout England, 43,000 people died, but the British never gave in. In the Second World War of this century, 50 million people would die, nearly half of them civilians. They would die not because they lived near military targets, but because they were the target. In the First World War, in violation of a long-established principle of civilized combat, Allied blockades of German ports and sporadic German bombing of Paris and London had extended the battlefront to the home front. But civilian casualties were limited. In the Second World War, the distinction between soldiers and civilians would collapse. Now anyone who contributed to the enemy's war-making capacity would be vulnerable and entire populations would be deliberately targeted because of their race and their religion. This was total war, made more lethal by the advance of technological power and pursued ultimately by forces on both sides. Pablo Picasso's Guernica is considered one of the masterpieces of 20th century art. It portrays the horror that consumed a Spanish town on April the 26th, 1937. German bombers and fighters sent by Adolf Hitler to help the fascists in the Spanish Civil War slaughtered 1,600 innocent civilians. There were no military targets of significance in Guernica. An outraged world condemned the attack as the immoral act of a rearmed Germany eager to test its new power. But Guernica was only the prologue to Nazi Germany's campaign in Europe. Poland, September the 1st, 1939. I was 10 years old. I was playing with my friend in the woods. 
we were picking mushrooms and we heard this tremendous noise. Uh, the trees started bending and uh, we saw these huge planes with the black markers. I knew that the war had started. In 25 days, German armies overran Poland. In nine months, virtually all of Western Europe. Adolf Hitler's objective was Lebensraum, living space vast enough for a new German empire, the Third Reich. We thought it was great, and, you know, something which no one had really experienced before, to go to an occupied country as a soldier. You are the master of that country, you believe. Hitler's goal was to enslave the Slavic people of Eastern Europe, a people he regarded as racially inferior. In Poland, his commanders ordered executions of the nobility, government officials, priests, and teachers. Nobody expected uh, that uh, the war would be against civilians. I saw my uh, family and my uh, friends and, uh, on a daily basis being uh, uh, murdered on the streets and, and, and shot. They made it very clear that we were slaves and we were uh, below a human being, as they call us, Untermensch. At the very bottom of Hitler's racial scale were Poland's three million Jews. They used to stop elderly men who were, had beards and young the beards by the roots. They made them lick their boots and also immediately all businesses were taken away. We had to wear the yellow star of David on the front and back of our clothing so that we would be easily recognizable. Poland's Jews were torn from their homes and banished to ghettos. The largest was in Warsaw. Nearly half a million people were crammed into an area where 50,000 had once lived. the ghetto was sealed. People were starving and dying of hunger. We also began to see a lot of uh, orphans, bedraggled children. Typhus was rampant. Tuberculosis was rampant. When people died, they were put out on the street and all the identification was taken away from them because then the family could get their ration and maybe exist a day longer. It was a horrible situation. would 
be surprised to what you can uh, get used to. Our human life was nothing for them. It was unworthy of living. I remember German soldiers photographing themselves to show, look at this, they are the, the, the strong, beautiful officers. Look, this is the Jews. In June 1941, Hitler launched his ultimate battle for the vast Lebensraum of the Soviet Union. The attack on the Soviet Union is, is a war for territory, but it is also an ideological crusade to destroy communism. It is also a racial crusade to destroy the largest demographic concentration of, of Jews in the world. So this war has too many temptations uh, for Hitler. The Soviet army was caught unprepared. In only two months, German forces penetrated 500 miles. When they encircled the old capital, Leningrad, Hitler ordered his commanders to wipe the city and its three million people off the face of the earth. No surrender would be accepted, even if offered. Bombed and shelled daily, civilians helped defend the city by digging trenches and building shelters. But they faced another enemy, the coldest winter in 30 years. There was no light, no heat, no fuel, no food. We received 125 grams of bread. Bread made of I don't know what, but not flour. It was so delicious for us. So we divided that small piece into three parts. Zena Generalova was trying to keep her three-month-old baby alive. Once a woman told me, what are you doing? Your child will die, so give all the food to your husband and save husband. That winter, the people of Leningrad found a slender lifeline. Nearby Lake Ladoga froze, enabling convoys of food and supplies to come in across the ice on makeshift rail lines. The same route allowed people to escape. Zena Genolova tried to leave with her family. My husband, he was already so blue, so blue, so thin, so, well, you cannot imagine. And the baby did not cry, did not cry. And in the fourth day, she died in the carriage. He died at the hospital. So, I did not save my family and was alone. Half of Leningrad's population perished during the siege, but the city never surrendered. The Russians held out for three winters, 900 days. People say, oh, you see, such terrible things are forgotten with time. No, that cannot be forgotten. Never. German generals had been instructed by Hitler to wage the Soviet campaign with, as he put it, unmerciful, unrelenting harshness. The German army became the instrument of ideological and racial warfare. Every street, shop and home became a battlefield, even though in some places German forces were at first welcomed by civilians as liberators from Stalin's oppression. I was billeted uh, in a house and there was a girl called Anna and I was young, 19 years old and um, I fell in 